was a ever was a reason or a rationale to go for a flight, this one makes a good one because uh, used about 40 minutes of flying to heat up the oil and then do a visual approach into runway 24. We're basically getting close to intercepting for the visual approach, which is depicted on the MFD and on the PFD. And uh, given that our elevation at this time is about 1,700 feet and our airspeed is about 157 miles an hour, uh, which is well within the gear extension speed, you will hear the gear extension and then the speed slow down as we get to the intercept point. Once you're lined up for the final approach fix, uh, and from the final approach fix and towards the uh, approach into the runway, uh, the rest of it is basically uh, energy management. So power reduction, normally on a real instrument approach, I would carry 18 inches of manifold pressure and about 2450 or so of the RPM. And that I would carry all the way down because that brings us to the gear extension speed. And also once we are visual, I put the flaps down. Uh, both the approach first and then the final full flaps. Here, because it's a visual approach, I used to slow down the aircraft further because there was another aircraft in the traffic pattern um, was departing. Um, slowed down the, and you can see the uh, speed slowed down significantly and the slope increased from 0 0.7 to 1.6 to keep pace with the uh, with the approach mode it's interesting so I put in us another inside view that you can see what basically one can see from it within the aircraft cockpit of the G1000 and you're also able to see what's uh, from another perspective, uh, just to see what it looks like from various uh, points of view. Both of these are from within the aircraft. One is a uh, pilot, co-pilot point of view, and the other one is uh, directly um, from within the cockpit, just above the glare shield. As we get closer to the ground, hear the uh, 500 foot warning and then the uh, minimums, which is set at about 300 based on the barometric pressure. You can see the airspeed declining significantly to set up for a landing at about 92 miles an hour. And we're at the uh, very short final for runway 24 down to about 88 miles an hour. And the touchdown is close to about 75, 70 to, 72 to 75 miles an hour. Roughly, with full flaps, the stall speed is at around 69 knots. So once we finish the flight and put the aircraft uh, back in the hangar, the oil changes the breeze actually. You unscrew and remove the panel, um, which I've unscrewed previously and you can see me removing the panel, and place it below the aircraft. And for visual inside, have a flashlight to see the oil drain cover which you unscrew and push to the side slightly and then insert the tubing to attach to the um, quick drain and turn the quick drain clockwise to allow the 
oil to flow from the um, engine into the container. And once done, you un anti-clockwise turn of the uh, quick drain and then remove the tubing. That pretty much is what's done to remove all the oil out of the uh, engine compartment. Make sure that the uh, quick drain is locked and there's no further oil flow from there. Once that is done, you, repl you replace the uh, oil drain cover and screw it on tightly. Now once done, you go to the other side of the engine. On the top side of the IO550 Bravo, you'll see the filter. In this case, I've used a Tempest AA48109 spin easy filter. And first, you have to cut the safety wire carefully not to hurt yourself. And once the safety wire is cut, um, you then remove the safety wire. And that takes a little bit of doing. Uh, it's easier probably to cut the safety wire and remove the top part of it, and then unscrew the uh, filter and then remove the remainder of the safety wire. And then you use a torque wrench to unscrew the filter, oil filter. Um, that's fairly simple, requires a little bit of effort but not a whole lot. And once it's uh, easy to unscrew, you can do that with your hands without using the uh, torque wrench. Have some um, paper towel or some rags around to keep any oil from dripping. So remove the uh, oil filter and then basically you sop up any oil that's in the base of the oil filter. Once that is done and the base is clean, you screw in the new oil filter with the torque wrench to the specified torque and uh, safety wire the um, 